You know, I think it's interesting when we look at this as historians, what you just said, it becomes a modern capital. The Japanese were saying, under the emperor, which is our great old tradition. That's why it's called a restoration of power to the emperors who have ruled Japan since ancient times. But in fact, he was a very modern monarch, and he also was modeled on Western examples. Images of the emperor prior to this restoration were forbidden. Oftentimes you would see uh, ancient paintings, and the image of the emperor, if painted at all, would show his lap, for example, kneeling, but his face was cut off by curtains. So it was a, a sacred presence. Suddenly, Japan is thrown into this conversation with the rest of the world, and put in our terms, the Japanese had a big PR problem. They didn't know how to create publicity for the emperor. So they looked to uh, Western models, and they would see photographs of how Bismarck or, or other great leaders, uh, Queen Victoria, were portrayed. They began to imitate these styles in prints like this, where Japanese officialdom, perhaps the cabinet here, the emperor emerging from his carriage, are shown in a, in a very European context. I can assure you the emperor was not this tall. But what they're trying to do is tell Japan and people outside that we have arrived and we're like you. But it was a struggle. So you have strange examples like this, an image of the emperor, but done in the motif that would typically be reserved for a kabuki actor. So he looks rather dashing and Hollywood-like here and over here statesman-like. So the contrast and the struggles to portray him continued for all of his reign. The model here, as you point out, is kabuki prints. So they're drawing on the influence of a traditional representation. What's also interesting is, as we know very well, the Meiji Emperor, who was very young when he was made the Emperor of the New Japan. How old was he, Hiromu? I think something like 12 years old. 12 years yeah. old. And he was very camera shy. Mm -hmm. Very camera shy. So apart from a few photographs we have of him when he was very young, and rather uncomfortable looking before the camera. After that, he refuses to pose for the camera. So we tend to know him, and the Japanese people tend to know him more through the major form of visual uh, communication through the woodblock prints. And he's in this uh, motif that, that's called uh, kagamie, so a mirror image. So it plays on the idea he's probably looking into a mirror uh, when he's... Uh, oh, that's interesting. So here, here we have the... The, the, the border of the mirror, right, oh. exactly. By the end of Meiji, every school child, and virtually everyone, would have some visual sense of what the emperor looked like. And this is happening just as the emperor himself is actually traveling through Japan exactly. on a series of uh, journeys where he's trying to make himself visible to his new subjects. So in some sense, they had to create the sense that there is an emperor for the entire country. Absolutely. I think, in fact, for some people it was news that there was this monarch that you were supposed to know and you were supposed to be loyal to. Of course, a lot of news to many Japanese in the countryside that they had an emperor. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly.